Wild Ones Podcast, episode 13. I'm Francis, this is Jimmy, and we're going to chat about bike stuff. How are you? I'm good. What have you been up to this week, Francis? I am very tired because I was at the Tour of Britain yesterday in the team car with Q36.5. You sound like you've been on the beers. I haven't. You're a bit croaky. Not a single beer. Not even one. No. A lot of Diet Cokes. Right. Zero beers. But it was very fun. We um, basically followed the team around. It was stage three. So they were already in a couple of couple of days riding and we got access to like the team bus, newest team bus in the pro peloton. It was really fancy. And what, newest cool as in like the younger, as in like it has the least mileage on it or newest as in the team are new? Mm, the team are new, but also it's like the newest, it's, it's been made with high tech stuff. And every team bus is, is unique. It's not like you just buy a team bus. Does it have one of those uh, hypnotherapy things in it? Unfortunately, no, oh. but it does have a coffee machine and lots of cupboards. They let us look in the cupboards. Oh, cool. Yeah, but it was cool. Went in the team car, went in car number two, like DS2, like the assistant DS car. Right. So we were driving ahead of the race until the first feed. And then we ended up in the convoy and that's where all the chaos happens. And there's riders coming out of everywhere. And it was very fun. I'm assuming that there's some kind of professional driving test that all of these people have to do to be able to ride amongst hundreds of cyclists at crazy speeds. Yeah. You would think that there is zero test to be a DS. You have to, well, that's wrong. You have to go and do a bunch of paperwork to become a DS. Right. Director sporty. So like the team manager and the guy who's in the car on the race radios and that. However, there is nothing. There's no practice. So you're just chucked into the convoy and there's no, there's not even guidelines. So you're just expected to know how it goes it's on. It's not even guidelines. Well, most of them are ex-pro riders, aren't they? So they know how it works. Yeah. You yeah. just already know how it works. Yeah, fair. But it is like in at the deep end, if you're first time in a convoy, you're usually, you won't start as the first car. You'll start doing the job that I, the car I was in. So it's not action straight away. Yeah. You're further back in the line. Um, so yeah. It's, I legitimately think... Uh, that I would enjoy driving in that environment more than doing the ri the bike riding. I think that's actually quite a buzz. Definitely, yeah, it's awesome. It's like it's basically like a car race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's real fun. They're racking it around the corners, and the motorbike guys love it as well. There's all the any. So you have a mix of in a race of that standard, you have a mix of police bikes who can legitimately stop traffic yeah. and NEG, so National Escort Group, and they're they they, they love it. Actually, yeah, it's a they're, great day. They're not allowed to stop traffic, are they? They can I, ask, I don't they think can so. ask people to stop. Yeah, yeah. We talked about this before with the yeah. we've, there's been accidents because of it. But uh, I still don't think they're allowed to stop traffic, which is why it's important they have to have the police there as well. Yeah. It's probably more expensive. Makes the race harder to run. But yeah, the the motorbike guys, big smile on their face everywhere they go. Beep beep. So and everybody like the, the I find it bonkers how many there are so many people in England who come out of their houses and watch bike races come past and they love it and they're going crazy and they're waving their flags and they're shouting and they're just it literally, it's four hours, four and up, four or five hours of people just waving to you. Even when we were just the team car, <laughs> they're probably really disappointed when we're just, it's just us. Probably. <laughs> but they, how, why does that not translate to drivers in the UK being nice? Uh, well, s well, some are. It's Different not, mindset. It's, I, I don't know. I think it's a small percentage of drivers that... Mm specifically hate cyclists big percentage but yeah i just as, as a whole cycling is just not loved in this country is it no but people love but it when love the tour it de when france it comes, comes through they love it when it comes past yeah when the tour de france comes well, well yeah, yeah. Do, you know, do you not remember when that happened yeah 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 because yeah. i remember we, we went out to see it when it came in because they rode in through essex into london yeah and it was just like it was just wild oh, it was wild crazy, it? i've got a question which i think is going to catch you out who won the race yesterday? Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we watched it on the GCN, like the, just the a phone. Yeah, it, which is what I've done. I've been in cars a few times now in races. Every single time you get pulled off, you don't see the finish, do you? Yeah. So everyone's just in their cars trying to get a signal, watching the race on the phones, just like who's going to win? Who's going to win? But they love it, and the guys from the team, you know, every member of staff, they are they love cycling. They so they're so. They're such a team, if that makes sense. They I would hope really so. care about, it's not just a job. They really care. And like when with some of their riders were in the, the little split that happened where, where the win, you know, where the guy won from. 
and uh, Q3 6.5 didn't get a result. And the guy in the car next to me, he's like, you could see he was sad. He was like, they're really rooting for their riders. They really care. Yeah. And it was just cool. It, there's a, a privilege and uh, awesome experience. I'm very lucky to have done that. Sweet. Um, and that was thanks to Scott. So thanks, Scott. It sounds like you've had a more interesting week than me. Mm. Just been pressure washing decking. That's quite therapeutic. No. For the first 10 minutes. No, even that it's not. Five minutes. I, I realize though that it's basically like practicing golf because you, you're constantly doing like a putting motion. So I've now got about 15 hours worth of putting practice. Not oh, that. yeah, we're going. Sh sh yeah. Sh sh mm. Shimano 105 mechanical is here. Well, yeah, but they've always done mechanical for 105, haven't they? 12 speed. Oh, 12 speed. 12 speed. One, yeah. more, one more gear. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> is it? Do we have it? We've got a giant pile of boxes. Uh, for the audio listeners in the background. Is it in the, is it in the background of the shot, Emily? <laughs> this giant pile. There's so much there, I can't tell. Yeah, it's just giant, just giant pile it's of It's like, boxes. where's Wally? Yeah, some of it might not even be from them. Isn't that Amazon box? We do have 105 12 speed, but it's not mechanical. Ooh. So we've had that for a while? Yeah. Okay, 105 mechanical is here, 12 speed. It is the group set I've not been waiting for. <laughs> But it's filling that gap, isn't it? It's, it's not a very exciting release. No. But it was announced on the same day as GRX 12-speed, which is exciting. It isn't. No, I think it's exciting. There's, the only difference is that it's got 12-speed rather than 11-speed. No, they've done one by. Yeah, but you could run the old one one by. One by 12. Yeah, or, yeah but it's like, it's 10-sprocket it's sprocket cassette. Don't care. So they've changed the free hub, yeah, cool. which is... Mm, Maybe do, I do care about that. What? Because you now can't use your wheels. Yeah. <laughs> so they've gone, they're basically using the mountain bike free hub. Uh, so you can now run a 10 sprocket, which is, uh, well, but gears on the back make more difference than gears on the front. Like they're changing teeth. Mm -hmm. So having a 10 sprocket actually gives you a much harder gear. And it's something that particularly people who are racing gravel want, which is why the guys running, running SRAM, like they've got the 10 sprocket now. Yeah got that on the shimano riders uh and yeah they've basically it's the answer to the mullet from sram isn't it i think it's cool and i like the mountain bike parts and being able to bang one of those mountain bike cassettes on which are cheaper if you look online i'm i'm it's very i think it's good that there's lots of versatility for people and they can do lots of different things have different gear ratios which i'm a big believer of yep I just don't think, I don't know why, like, yeah, you know, technology changes and we've moved from eight, well, six to seven to eight to nine to 10 to 11 and now to 12. I just don't think it's a big deal. Like, would I go, oh, I better up upgrade my group set to a 12 speed one instead of 11 speed? No, of course you wouldn't. Doesn't make just, any difference. It just doesn't make any difference. In the grand scheme of things, it's just, it's just, it's, it's not important. Um, it's good that they're still doing a mechanical group set though. Because everyone is moving everything to electric, aren't they? When you say everyone, you mean just SRAM? And Shimano. Oh, what, the two, the top, top, end, yeah, the top end stuff. Well, yeah, like... Ultegra and Dura Ace are only electric. The, the exciting thing about this is that it isn't DI2. <laughs> <laughs> so people who want mechanical have that option. Uh, yeah, I mean... Well, good. it just brings the price down a lot, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. How much is it? Apparently it's under a thousand pounds. Okay. So it's going to be about £990, which means that it's £740 cheaper than the DI2 version. Significant. Okay, yeah. I mean... And it, as, as you put it last week, DI2 is just a couple of wires. <laughs> is that what I said? Yeah. In, in what context? Me, it is, me, it is just a couple of wires. Me saying I don't want to fit it myself. Oh, yeah. It's just a couple of wires. <laughs> it's a 740 quid for just a couple of wires. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's true. Uh, I think oh, there's going to be people like thousand pounds. That's what Dura Ace used to be, and it's like, yeah, but this is better than Dura. Like this twelve, this one hundred five is better than old Dura Ace. It is. Mm. It, it's so smooth. Well, I haven't tried it, but the eleven speed one was better than the old Dura Ace. It's so smooth. The old Dura Ace was very good. Oh, it was amazing at the time, but compared to the how it feels to shift with the new one hundred five negligible even the last iteration of 105 i would still pick that Dura, that yeah, older the Dura design's race. better the levers feel nicer it's sleek the front mechs are really fast 
The, the front They're Macs way are better. better. It's way Fr better. The Macs are better. The front Macs. But the Macs is that's it. That's the group set. That's half the group set. What? Half the time you're shifting with the front Mac. It's all of it. It's amazing. You're not. You are. No. <laughs> oh, there's also no rim brake version. Yeah. Predictable. Sad, mm -hmm. but predictable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what can you? It's around it. It's, right, yeah, it's all gone, isn't it? It has, it's yeah. all going. You just have to go more old school. You, you either have to buy older group sets or from up and coming group set manufacturers if mm -hmm. you want rim brake. Mm -hmm. Who it, is it aimed at? What, this group set? Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure because it's very expensive. Oh, well, I think people get this wrong. I think p because 105 has historically been the known as this group set for the people. How, how, who, I mean, who coined that term? I don't know. It's always been th it's always been an enthusiast level group set. It's a racing group set. It is. It always has been. That's how Shimano have bracketed the different group sets. You know? 105, Ultegra, Dura Ace. It's all in that top end enthusiast section on their website. They have this like graphic. And the uh, it still is. I know exactly who this group set is made for. Who? It isn't people buying bikes. It's people manufacturing bikes. It allows them to spec a bike that's three thousand pounds mm -hmm. rather than four and a half thousand pounds. Mm -hmm. It allows them to have that kind of I don't even know what you call it now. It's the, that price point between like two and three and a half thousand pounds. Because if you had DI two on it, it would they would then add another thousand pounds, another two thousand pounds on top. The D, DI one hundred five DI two is going to be like four grand bikes going forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then one hundred five mechanical is going to be the two to three and a half thousand pound bikes. Mm -hmm. And then under two thousand, maybe even three thousand, you're going to get the the Sauras and the Clarises and the micro shifts of the world. Well, for now. So I think this is because manufacturers have said we need a twelve speed mechanical. So that we can get our price points back, mm. price points right. Mm. I think it's cool. I like it. I would ride it. I think it's cool that there's the option still. It'd be sad if in the next iteration it's only electric, but we'll see. Talk to me about cues. Cues. Where does I, I don't I don't really understand what the point of cues is and where it's going to sit. It, the idea is that it replaces all of the. Lower than 105 group sets. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. And it's, uh, there's cross compatibility between the speeds. Right. Somehow. I don't understand yet what that looks like. Um, but that those are the group sets that are going to, yeah. It, 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 it makes it less confusing and incompatible because at the moment, like nothing works with anything because it's different speed, different speed, different speed, different speed. Is Q's going to be 12 speed? Do you know that? Uh, I don't think so. I think it goes right up to 11. It's going to be 11. Is Oh, I, do you know what? I remember it now. It works with something like 9, 10, 11 speed, cross-compatible yeah. with yeah, different... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. So essentially what Q's is really going to be is 11 speed 105 is basically what it's going to be, isn't it? And it allows them to price point it lower. And they're doing like flat bar versions and drop bar versions and all of that kind of stuff. The flat they? bar ones I'm pretty sure you can I get think... or some people can get. yeah. Um, the other versions will be similar sort of drivetrain, I expect. But they, yeah, I am excited about that one. So I guess Q's is going to become or potentially become the group set of the people, depending on where they price it. If it's a, if it's like a five hundred pound group set, that's a cool system that you can probably get discounted for three hundred at various points in the year. That mm -hmm. could be a banger of a group set. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I hope the compatibility. I mean, if it, do you reckon it's like the same? Do you reckon it's one chain, which is just narrow enough that fits all of, all of those speeds, or well, you changing that? Because the thing, the the one thing I kind of I liked about, like eight speed chain, nine speed chain, you don't have to like. You basically can just not lube it. It just they just work for ages, don't they? Eight, eight, nine, and ten is like cross compatible, pretty much, isn't it? Uh, there's some crossover. There is, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But why Why would it be more durable? Why because it, cause it's just bigger, isn't it? I suppose, yeah. If you're in like a track chain, you don't have to do anything to it. Harry rode, uh, Harry Mack, we always talk about Harry Mack. <laughs> he's like rode the full way from Morocco all the way through Europe back home. And he was, you know, bike packing, sleeping on the side of the road. 
nine speed group set. It's brilliant because he's just, oh, I never have to lube, <laughs> never have to lube my chain. Whereas like 11 speed chain, you have to lube it all the time. You got to maintain it more. Do you think it's also though the bigger that parts? If if you're buying a cheaper or a, a lower speed group set, you probably care about it less and care about the weight of it less. So you're buying a really heavy, over-engineered, overproduced cassette that actually is just significantly more durable than uh, expensive Durace chain or whatever parts that are really designed for performance rather than durability. Mm. I end up doing that anyway with work. whenever I have a group set and then I wear out parts, I, I end up buying the cheapest, but com- the, you know, whatever's compatible, but the cheapest version of that. Yeah. So like, I used to ride Dura Ace, but I put a 105 cassette on when I needed to change it mm-hmm. because it doesn't make any difference. It's heavier though, Francis. We know you love weight. Ooh. Well, except for race day. Now I put a Dura Ace cassette on. <laughs> I don't want to wear it out in training. But it doesn't make a difference. <laughs> Next up, Wahoo has dropped the price of the Kicker Core following legal action with Zwift. Why do we say Wahoo? You say Wahoo as well. It's because that's what the word is. Wahoo is a noise. Wahoo. What well, all words are noises if you say them. Yeah, but you're saying it as you're saying a noise. Wahoo. Wahoo is how you spell it. Wahoo. Wahoo. Background. <laughs> all right. So here's here, I got one for you here. Buzz. Buzz. Yeah. Zzz. There you go. Okay, yeah, fine. You win. <laughs> Wahoo have launched legal action against Zwift in October 2022, claiming Zwift's new turbo trainer, the Zwift Hub, infringed on their patents. This week, both sides have mysteriously agreed to drop the case. Now, Wahoo's permanently dropped the price of the Kicker Core by £150 in the UK, from £700 to £550. In the US... It's gone from nine hundred dollars to six hundred dollars, big jump, and in Europe it's gone from eight hundred euros to six hundred euros. These new prices are even cheaper than their Black Friday deals. Zwift's own trainer, which sits in the same performance bracket as the Kicker Core, retails for four hundred and fifty pounds in the UK. That's interesting. That's a significant drop in price. So they're definitely trying to be competitive with mm. Zwift. So I'm assuming they've lost a big chunk of market share. I guess it goes to show how much the trainer make cost to make. If they're still making a profit. Or they've just what what as in like not very much. Yeah. Very likely. Or all tech is like that, I guess. I do think it's interesting that the price has come down so significantly. Mm-hmm. I think there's been stuff in the press over the last couple of years about Wahoo struggling financially. And I think probably post uh, pandemic chaos where everyone wanted to buy a million turbos has probably started to kick in now. They're probably making less money and going, well, now we're losing market share to Zwift in hardware as well. But we need Zwift because people buy them to use on Zwift more than anywhere else. What do we do? So they're just trying to be more competitive, I guess. Yeah. They, tri- so. they tried to stop Zwift, which I think is a very bad idea because Zwift, Zwift could presumably just go, we no longer allow Wahoo Turbos on our platform. I don't think they can. Why can't they? Because it's just a signal, isn't it? It's just a, uh, it's just an Ant Plus thing that says, this is how many watts are going out. Like, but it does, surely there's what, not... But the signal tells you what the device is. So they could definitely... Because when it comes up, it'll say like Wahoo Kicker or Tax Neo 2T. It knows what the, what the device is. Yeah. It's a weird relationship, isn't it? it Between is. all of them. Because Garmin have their own training thing but they need to let their turbos work with zwift so Mm -hmm. doing things with it's just very important that it all works together and they i guess it's delicate them releasing their own trainer are they going to upset the training manufacturers well definitely 100 percent. yeah um but i presumably they're trying to not be direct competitors Mm -hmm. like we haven't seen zwift um, I, I would imagine Zwift are interested in like accessibility. Is it in a, they want more people on Zwift, and therefore, how do you do that? You make it easier for people to get onto Zwift. Yeah. So you bring the price down. You 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 add a, a good quality product that is as accessible as it can be in that space, mm-hmm. and then leave the high end stuff to the other manufacturers. You know, like Tax have got multiple turbos, like over eight hundred pounds. Yeah, you know, like sure. they they are 
uh, and the same with Wahoo, you know, they've got those like sit on bike things and stuff. You know, there's some proper big boy high end products there. Mm-hmm. Whereas at least until now, Zwift haven't come in and gone like, right, well, we want to compete with all of those. They've just gone, well, let's get something that's works with our platform, make it as cheap as we possibly can and get more people on the platform. Yeah, it's good. But it is also good for there to be competitors to Zwift so that it forces Zwift, you know, take away the monopoly a bit, have have other people in the platform. So there is good things with the my whoosh platform coming through. I'm not particularly keen on the source of the funds uh, for my whoosh. Yeah. What happens when they release their own trainer? Well, they'll probably just buy Zwift <laughs> and Wahoo and tax. tax and just merge it into one company. <laughs> presumably, They have unlimited money. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, yeah. And unlimited oil, presumably. <laughs> So yeah, com- competition is good. Um, does it mean Wahoo are actually creating space for other products in their lineup? You know, tax tax are an example of some which have a lot of variation. They have a lot of price points in the turbo space. Whereas what's Wahoo did just two? Oh, I think it's more than that now. Or maybe it's two direct mount ones and then the like sit on bike. Mm. T- tax is maybe four or five because they've even got they i'm pretty sure tax even do the non-smart ones still all, all the oh ones, yeah tax do loads of non-smart ones yeah like they do, do rich they? regular turbo trains which you can still use with uh with zwift as yeah. long as you've got power meter, power meter on yeah yeah um they, wahoo i'm on their website now they have a certified recondition that doesn't count as well kicker snap kicker rollers which is the thing that nick's got in his shop which yeah. is the weird rollers thing it's good for doing bike fits yeah, that's why he likes it uh, there's the kicker core and the standard kicker. So a th- just over a thousand pounds for the big daddy one, 550 quid for core. The rollers are reduced on their website, exactly the same price, 550 quid. Wow. And the snap is 299 pounds. Oh, wow. But that's okay. where you're rubbing your back wheel. Okay. It's yeah. like, uh, if, if you can avoid those, I would, I, I, I don't like that kind of trainer. No, I mean, but they're, we we presumably well I've had one that's how I started turbo yeah 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 it was it's the it's one, the actually. it is the entry level and I get it and it serves its purpose and gets you into it but once you're into it a bit more it's just like you're not wearing out all of this stuff and it's just it literally is friction isn't it on the tire that mm-hmm. you ideally have a special tire for it and a separate wheel which it's, I never did just, no you just <laughs> so everyone runs a normal tire yeah and then it inevitably just gets worn down and you just change really it really fast you change it when winter's over yeah yeah yeah. But they don't, the thing I don't like about those is they just don't feel, they don't feel right. Well, none of them do. I don't know. I, can't, I, I think they're really smooth. The smart turbo, it's a direct drive. Not smart, direct drive. I don't think direct drive makes a difference. I think float makes a difference. For me, the only difference is float. You mean when you're moving? Well, it's just got a bit of play mm. so that like, you don't want loads so that you're like, you know, leaning off the side like you're on a, in, you know, in the wild, wild west on a horse wrangling with one foot in the stirrup jumping up and down yeah i didn't realize that tax that's purposefully built into the taxes i thought it just moved a little bit but it's 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 movement side to side but it's only the higher on end purpose. Ones. it's not all of them I don't yeah know. the neo 2t yeah yeah the, I've, I've got the whereas a kicker doesn't do any of that it's just it's fixed yeah it's fixed but then you can get a rocker plate which then elevates it like the rocker plate, because you had one for your Everest yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, it makes Double it harder. Everest. I should have, I shouldn't have used it in terms of. I mean, it, it makes it feel like, oh, this, you know, that's a nice feeling, but it's harder. Why? Because of the movement. It's just you're, you're you're engaging your core and arms and stuff with all that climbing. Like it, it. Read some reviews about it. Honestly, they, it's harder. It's harder than just being static. But if you were static, it might have been harder in a different way. Yeah, potentially. You might have been so limited in your position that mm-hmm. you actually didn't finish it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You kind of, it's rever- It's backwards to how you think. It's backwards to being outside on a, on a bike and how you lean. So it's like you've got to, when you're out the saddle, you have to push on your hands instead of the bike naturally moving from underneath you. So it's right. like, it, it, it's weird. It's weird. Okay. But it is something. It's something different and it feels more dynamic. However, it is not replicating what's outside. Okay, so I won't get a rocker plate then, is what you're saying? Well, you can get one if you want. You've got space in your new house. I don't want a rocker plate. You can put it where the, uh, the pool table is that you've had to get rid of that the previous owner's put in. <laughs> oh, we'll just leave you this pool table. That would be nice and easy to get rid of. It's unbelievably hard. Yes. It's about to be just you dumped regret- in the garden. Oh, okay, yeah. 
Definitely first world problems. Though, isn't that it? is first world problems. Yeah. Out, outdoor pool table. You, you've outed me as having a pool table. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, came with the house. It did. You're right. Which is a very good value purchase, in my opinion. Because it had a pool table. Mm. Yeah. It's funny though, isn't it? Because the pool table's next to the swimming pool as well. <laughs> that is a joke. I don't. That know is a joke. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Big question of the day. Should cyclists stick to speed limits? So this question comes off the back of a video which was posted by police in Devon, Devon and Cornwall. Uh, they shared it on Twitter and it's a group of cyclists descending at 39 mile an hour, 62 kph, into a town that has a 30 mile an hour speed limit. In their tweet, the police said, cyclists, please be mindful of your speeds and just how well this will affect you in the event of a collision. This group today on Dartmoor observed traveling at a near 40 mile an hour on a 30 mile an hour restricted road. All stopped and offered appropriate words of advice. As expected, lots of people commented saying that they should be fined like a driver would be. However, in the UK, there's no law that says cyclists must stick to the speed limit. Speed limits apply to motor vehicles only. The only exception is when a local bylaw has been enforced. I think what this shows is that there's a change in that the police now know the laws. Because historically, this is the sort of thing where the police would do things, go, look at these cyclists breaking the law. We've, we've stopped them and done this and done that. And then the cyclists would then have to then correct the police and say, actually, no, this isn't illegal. There are no laws saying we can't ride a, a bicycle at certain speeds. Um, which is good. Should cyclists obey the speed limit um no probably yeah why well it's safer isn't it not that much safer depends on the scenario there's there's places where clearly you need to be careful and shouldn't be speeding but in a lot of scenarios it doesn't matter on a bike give me a scenario where if you're breaking the speed limit on a bike mm -hmm that wouldn't also be applicable to a car? Um, cycling from my old house to James's shop down in London, where the speed limit the whole way is 20 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. I'll ride the whole thing at 25 on a bike. Okay. That doesn't make me that much more dangerous to anyone. Whereas a car going over that speed, if that hits someone, that is. So... So if you go over the speed limit and the car also goes over the speed limit, that's more dangerous. For the yeah 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 equivalent like if, if you me doing five miles an hour more versus the car doing five miles an hour more, that's a significant safety difference. The car goes from being, you know, it goes from injuring someone to killing someone, whereas I go from riding into someone probably falling off and hurting myself to riding into someone and falling off and probably hurting myself still. Like it's just. What about when you're descending on a 30 mile an hour road at 50 miles an hour? As long as you can see that it's completely clear in front, it's fine. So the same applies to a car then? Yep. So now you're saying cars can break the spread. Well. No, I'm saying that's the law. Then they have to stick to the law. But if someone was out in the lanes around here driving fast and you can see that it's completely clear and they wanted to speed, I'm not going to have a problem with it. It'd be James and his Jag. You go out for a drive. <laughs> My next door neighbor has a Harley. He goes out and drives. Do you think he speaks to the speed limit? Probably on a Harley. <laughs> <laughs> on a Harley, he probably goes 20 miles an hour uh. under. He, just, he wants to do everything slowly and loudly. Mm. Um, I, I, I think... Um, you, you, I know we've been out on rides together. Uh, no, we were, driving to, we were driving down the country together and there was motorbikers, like fast superbike guys mm -hmm. out on the roads and they could see in front of them in the Pennines and you were like, you didn't have a problem with that. Well, I'm not just gonna. I don't just like, I, like I don't proclaim outrage at people speeding. No, there you go. Because I, it's it's not for me to enforce. I'm not a police person. Mm. It's not my I business. Think this is a non-issue because cyclists don't hurt people. Like they, they, there's very few, and in, in the grand scheme of things, loads of people are killed by motor vehicles. No one is killed by cyclists. What if you had one? 
in the last like few years in the UK. It's probably like, is, it's just it's it, negligible. It's probably more than that, but yeah, it, it, percentage wise, it's significantly less. Yeah. So why is there any focus on this at all? Because people hate cyclists, and this will get some clicks. That's why. Well, inevitably, yeah. well, that is that isn't why Devon and Cornwall police have shared it on Twitter, but that's why it's become news. Why? Why would they share something like that on Twitter? Because they're misinformed and they don't understand that well, it's no, not that. I, th- I think they're very well informed because they they haven't said it's illegal. They're just saying, you know, like be mindful, like be be safe. There could be an old person walking across that road because you've entered a town. You know, like for example, where I now live, the road outside my house is a thirty mile an hour, but the roads connecting my house are sixty mile an hour roads. So people carry their sixty mile an hour speed through the village. So if yeah. so, there could be people. There could be kids playing in the street. There could be an elderly person crossing the road or mm. a, a dog that moves slowly because it's 15 years old. Yeah. Uh, that is ultimately why there are speed limits, you know. Um, should they apply to bikes? I think it would be better for cycling in this country. I'm specifically talking about the UK. If anyone on a bike was regulated in the same way as anyone in a car. And the reason I say that is it stops anti-cycling car drivers going, but you don't pay road tax, not that that exists, Um, that you don't have insurance, you don't abide by the speed limit, you run red lights. If we actually, I personally think if we had more accountability as cyclists, uh, then it would mean, well, I say accountability, if we were regulated in the same way, then the anti-cyclists can't use that as an argument. They literally have no argument then. Well, they no. It would just be something else. Well, it would just have to be. Well, you're slowing me down. We're like, well, so what? I pay to be here. Yeah, but that's what they're really annoyed about. The argument is is irrelevant. They're still going to be annoyed. Well, yeah, but they can't be. They'll just be annoyed with themselves. They just have to go and like be like, oh, I'm disappointed with me. Yeah. Well, well, I guess. Of course, yeah. the the counter argument to what I'm saying makes cycling significantly less accessible. So like yeah. all of a sudden, like, like, like the helmet debate. Yeah, 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 exactly. It, it's, it's one of those things that if you say you have to wear a helmet, it's just a barrier to people using bikes and there shouldn't the, be the, barriers The thing that makes bikes. cycling more safe is more people riding bikes. The single most important thing that should be focused on. So I think that's any right. restrictions like that, helmet law, have to have insurance, anything like that, no. Stupid ideas, bin. I don't think it's stupid. I think- It is stupid. I think it's- not the best idea, but I think it has a case. Uh, lower speeds, pros for lower speeds are if you did crash your bike, you are the severity of your injury is reduced, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are riding at a slower speed. If you crashed into a person or someone else's property, you are going to, or more likely to cause less damage. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you are moving slower, your reaction times will therefore be fast. Well, your reaction time won't be faster, but the amount of time you have to react will be longer. Mm -hmm. Negatives. Lots of people don't even have a method for tracking speed. Nope. So you would have to invest in some kind of thing. Yeah. I know there used to be like like the OG bike computer was like a sensor on your sensor wheel, thing. yeah, which kind of gave you like a, a random. Yeah. Well, I guess it is. But even that's science, a barrier to it? entry. It's like uh, you know, just people aren't people riding around Newcastle right now. They're not gonna. They would be like, oh, I gotta get that thing now. Yeah, I but won't ride. Make make it like a a requirement for bike manufacturers. You know, there has to be reflectors on a bike, so say there has to be a speed thingy. But I still don't. I think it's it's the right option. It's not the right option. Um, of course, because also a cyclist doesn't have a number plate or a ident- something that specifically identifies them, it would be nearly impossible for the police to enforce without actually having someone on the side of the road chasing cyclists down if they have broken the speed limit or something. So actually the, the implication or the... Um, putting it into place would be nearly impossible anyway, without bringing in a number plate system, which although I like the idea, I hate it more than I like the idea. You like the idea? Well, yes, because I think, because it takes away the argument. 
So when, when I'm riding down a road and some idiot pulls over and goes, oh, bro, 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 you shouldn't be on the road because you don't do this and you don't do that. Or I go, well, look, there's my number plate. I just don't care. Report me to the police if you don't think I'm doing something. If, 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 if you think I'm doing something illegal, mm. there's my number plate. Report me to the police. You'll see that they do absolutely nothing because I am legit. I am I'm legal. But I don't think regulation is the way to go. <laughs> it's definitely not the way. It's definitely. I mean, does it work for cars? Because cars don't ever speed. No. It's not going to work. For, but like, it's just stupid. The whole thing's stupid. It's a non-issue. It's annoying that they post it like this because it's a non-issue. Um, well, it depends. You'd have to look at their Twitter account. You'll probably find that their Twitter account or police Twitter is run by some policeman who doesn't like is cycling. It, no, it's about public service. And the public service in this scenario is we know this isn't illegal, but just consider your environment better. Mm. You know, it's safer for you. It's safer for other people that are around. Yes. And the biggest impact there is pedestrians. It's not other cars. It's not other road users. It's actually, there could be some old nana crossing the road and it actually takes her a while. And she sees a, you know, this, this always happened because it would happen on commuters. People walk out into the road, a bike comes towards them and they always end up stepping in the, the direction that you end up going. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, always sure. happens for some reason. No, so there's a little old nana with a Zimmer frame in the road on a 30 mile an hour road that you're entering because it's a downhill into it at 50 miles an hour and you're going to go, shit, I'll go, I better go behind old Nana. She's not going to take a step backwards. She does a backflip, leave, leaving a Zimmer frame in the road. Backflip, yeah. You take her out, you take yourself out and then your mate then runs into the Zimmer frame and then it's, it's game over for everyone. That was quite an image. It was. Yeah. That's why, they, that's why their tweet exists. Back to this. If safety... Well, that was this. Well, that was... <laughs> If safety was their concern, I would expect to see at least 99 posts telling drivers to be safe and not break the speed limit for this one post about cyclists. That might be I true. Bet that, I bet that's not the case. It might be. I bet that's not the case. I would imagine that the bulk of their tweets are about capturing drivers, dodgy, uh, illegal people. Mm. And probably a lot of them are like high speed car chases because that's what happens. Do we want to talk about, sorry, this is, uh, this is a off topic but probably not then do we want to talk about what happened to us when we were out shooting the dji video the other day oh moped boys oh northern moped boys which was i thought i was overreacting and then i wasn't and then i realized that i was correct in my decision so we, me and jimmy were out filming a video for a new action camera that came out with well, it's not unbelgered or anything so the dji like we were filming a video about it out on the gravel bikes on the lanes here um Gravel tracks, which historically the bows is the, it's like an old wagon way where there's gates on the end that stopped uh, motor vehicles getting through, stopped dirt bikes, you know, people on dirt bikes getting through and using that as a cut through. They've removed all of that, and that's what we were riding on and filming. Presumably moved it for ac accessibility reasons. Yeah, so that I reckon people so. on uh, hand bikes. Thing. It's a good push thing. chairs, etc., can access it. Yeah, but yeah. Also, the reason they were there in the first place is for. To stop motors going for you, exactly. We were descending one of the tracks. Fair clip. You know, we didn't like 20 mile an hour, 25 mile an hour, just going to be riding along. Not and in the distance, my eyesight's pretty bad. In the distance, I could, I thought it was a guy on a touring bike with lights, I feel like wobbling. And I was like, what is that? What was going on? And it wasn't. It was two people on a moped, both with their faces covered. One had a full face helmet, like blacked out. And the other guy had like a ballot, like, um, what do you call it? Like a bandana over his face. It wasn't even that. It was, it was literally a hoodie where he'd pull the strings. No, but they had that as well, didn't he? What, I, he was like a tiny... No, I think food. he was like um, Kenny from South Park. <laughs> like that. Anyway, covered faces. And uh, one of them, they saw us. We were descending towards them for about 200 meters away. And one of them got off and the other guy turned around. And we both, we both stopped and looked at each other. And we were like, is that what I think it is? You said, I'm a Londoner, and you just turned around. <laughs> and you, le you, you legged it like me when I see a dog next to the road. <laughs> you, were like, you were like, God. I'm was, not getting involved like, with that. Do you remember I so shouted like, at you? There's been a spit. Yeah, you did. You were like, dog, and you just attacked me. <laughs> no, I, well, no, I, I, it, I, on this track, I shouted at you, and I said, slow down, because I need to be able to breathe if we're going to have to fight them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't be out of breath. Well, because we I thought fighting. they were going to like chase us back down. Yeah. But that was, it legitimately was a... A, a replica or it was a similar sort of thing to there was a being a spate of robberies of people stealing bikes and stealing people's phones like snatching them out of their hands of kids 
well, not just kids, but people on mopeds in London. And they're generally, Alex Richardson has this. Uh, he was riding for Alperson, pro cyclist riding for Alperson. Uh, he's one of the UK domestic riders at the moment. He was in Richmond Park um, and some guys on a moped pulled out a machete, pushed him off his bike and then threatened him and stole his bike. And he like tried to get away with them from them, but they, they like chased him down and pushed him off his bike and they stole his bike. And that was what I thought was happening with you. Mm. We turned around. They didn't follow us. We went back to the road, did a loop around, got back to the car. And then we'd put our bikes next to the front of the car. I was trying to process it. I was like, what is, that? is that what they were trying to do? Were they trying to rob us or were they just like, they're having a spliff or what? And then we were chatting to the guy who was parked behind us who had a nice dog, didn't they? Mm -hmm. And suddenly we heard the noise of the moped and they were going for our bikes and you just would like lunged and then they saw you and bottled it and didn't, didn't steal them and then kind of sped, sped off in the other direction. And the guy sat on the back was just like staring at me. He was, he was eyeballing, wasn't he? Yeah. I think I said to you, get the selfie stick. Because I was going to- To do what with? Well, it's a weapon, with. isn't it? It's a three meter <laughs> long weapon. Film him. <laughs> it's really long. <laughs> get a selfie stick, take a, self, take a selfie with him. Get the thumbnail. Uh, that, yeah. So that, thankfully, we were fine. If we'd have carried on down that hill at the speed we were doing and just tried to ride past them, I reckon they would have tried to like trip us up, push us off. I kind of um, wish- James Jobber, after I told him that story, guy that works in the bike shop nearby, someone tried to kick him off his bike on one of those tracks while he was riding out training. They didn't push him off, luckily. He just stayed upright and they just panicked, I guess, because he didn't fall off and, 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 and rode and away. Then, and then he, being as strong as he is, basically rode away from them on a motorbike. Faster than their motorbike, yeah. yeah. probably. Um, so that was that was weird. I think my, my theory is young people see things like this on Instagram, TikTok, social media, and go, actually, that's a good idea. It's almost like a method. They, they're being presented with a method for thievery. And I think they were young. I, I think it was a 50cc motorbike, which, mm -hmm. which means that they're potentially even 16 years old. And they were like, oh, let's the, do the it. Kid, the guy on the back, the one that was staring at me looked young. Yeah. He looked young. Even from his, he was just small and skinny. <laughs> like you. Despite his face. <laughs> I can only see the middle of his face. They probably thought that's why they were going for us. Because he's like, this is, this is a, a tiny person. I'll take their bike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the what I think is happening they've seen this method mm. and they're like oh let's go and see what happens they know so many people ride up and down yeah, that yeah, track yeah. they probably actually saw our bikes and, and were like oh that's not a mountain bike not interested they were probably looking they're for they're mountain bikes they confused yeah yeah we know what it is we can sell it and I think they bottled it and, and, and yeah legged it off I agree I think that's what or happened. we are just being paranoid because we you're from London. I lived in London. We know what happens. And actually they were just having a spliff and being like, why are those nah, guys? Mate, no, no, why no. are those, why are those weirdos in Lycra just staring no at way. us? No way. They stopped. They saw us, stopped, turned the scooter around. They were ready for something. There was going to, something was going to happen. Coincidence. They were going to have a spliff. Mm. It did take them a while to come back out the other end. So they probably did have a spliff. Yeah. But maybe it was like, maybe it was like, oh, they're gone. Let's just have a spliff instead. And then got to us incredibly paranoid with us just staring at them and they were like, Shit, let's get out of here. <laughs> they did run away. You must have been, you must have had that air because you're normally not a scary man. But in that situation, I was like, oh, Jimmy's on it. He's on it. He's, he's moving the fastest I've ever seen him move. This is why. If Imagine if you could ride a bike that fast. This is why the guy was staring back at us because he was like, I better watch them in case they start chasing. <laughs> with a jousting stick, with my selfie stick. We scared we were, them. Yeah. That's what it was. We were filming stuff with, I don't, I don't want to, do we spoil the video? No, don't spoil the video. Okay, I don't want to spoil the video. We had something pretty cool. Yeah. You should subscribe and check it out. <laughs> you said that like a Lothario. You should subscribe and check it out. Mm. It's because you're a croaky voice because you had a few beers yesterday. I didn't, I didn't have a beer. Yeah, whatever. Time for another round of overrated, underrated. I'm going to read out a list of things and you're going to tell me if they are overrated or underrated. First one, Ribble. I don't know that much. Well, I, can't, I don't know much about their current bike offering. What I do know is that they used to sell crap bikes and then probably got a load of money and then really developed their bikes a lot. They look they look pretty good. There's it's changed. There's but look, do you remember what do you remember Ribble being? It was a website, in my memory, it was the website where you bought group sets from. Was and it? And they would do group set packages. Right. Yeah. I guess I started before you, yeah. So it was like it was the plate you go on Wiggle or Ribble. 
and one of them would have on my chain reaction as well at one point but the ribble would always have it, it was a uk based website where they would sell group sets like maybe gray market but like in a package so you'd get everything you need for for the bike including like chain cassette everything they uh see i always thought ribble was like um planet x or dolan do you remember dolan mm, yeah but they didn't so ribble used to be the brand where you bought your crappy blue winter bike from that everyone had the same bike yeah. everyone had that blue winter bike and it was like a, not a nice blue it was like a purpley blue yeah really deep but but it was like a functional heavy you didn't care about it winter bike that everyone bought because it was so cheap i had the dolan version of that you got dolan, yeah, yeah 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 and it was i mean was, that, that was a bike now it's turned into a high-end bike brand so presumably as i mentioned they've probably gone right this is this is big bucks. Let's mm -hmm. get some big fat investment and just completely, I guess so, redone the whole thing because yeah. it's 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 a, it's a it feels like it's a completely different business. Yeah, things I like about Ribble, they have sponsored a lot of domestic UK teams. They've done a lot for the for the you know for the community, that big widespread UK community of bike racing. They had the Ribble team for a couple of years. Well, for years mm -hmm. they've had a Ribble team. Um, I did a training camp with them in Spain before they folded, but I think there might be something, a new version of the team in a different sort of structure coming out. Uh, the Currently they have a bunch of like privateer riders. It's, it's, sorry, it's, oh, a, yeah, it's a team, yeah. but they're all individually doing their own race calendars. Mm -hmm. There's no strict calendar. It's not like a organized team that turns up to a premier calendar in the same, like historically yeah. teams would be. Uh, so they, you know, they, yeah, they sponsor a lot of teams. The bikes are okay. They they're not they're not afraid to try things. Yeah, yeah. They make the like the aero one. I don't particularly like how it looks. I, I don't know. If I personally would never. I just I'm not drawn to Ribble for some reason. I don't look at their no. stuff and go, "That's for me." Same. I know lots of people who ridden their bikes and really like them. I'm going to put them in underrated because I like that they try things. Mm. You know, like they had those horrible handlebars that turned out to be death trap. But they tried it, you know. It's good that they're trying. Things. Oh, the def. Oh no. So that was that wasn't the handlebars. Well, they were designed. So the team that I was with, they had a version of the aero bike they make with handlebars, which were designed with like grip, grip feeling stuff on. Yeah. Uh, kind of like skateboard grip tape. Wouldn't that, they? Wouldn't they a death trap? Uh, no, they worked, but they ended. Most of them ended up putting bar tape on because they preferred it. But they were designed to work without bar tape. Yeah. The problem with them. The, the bike, the front end of the bike, was that there was a steering lock. So in order to stop you from, to make it aero, they had this like nice conical shape on the front. Yep. And if you steered too far, the carbon would impact yep. and it would break. Death trap. So they had a steering lock, which made it even less far you could steer. So when you were riding at slow speed and some of the riders on this training camp, this happened to, they were, you know, in a car park getting ready on their bikes and then suddenly they go, oh, and they lock the steering and they crash. Death, Death trap. Death <laughs> I like that they're trying things. That bike was overrated. <laughs> but as a whole, oh, they're doing stuff, you know. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think they're based cool. in Ribble Valley. Ribble Valley? Is it Ribble River? I th it is a river. Yeah. There's a, there's a viaduct as well, the Ribble, Ribble viaduct. Ribble Lord. But they, yeah. I mean, yeah, cool. I don't, the uh, paint jobs of those bikes weren't there. I saw all right, orange and blue. And I don't think that made the bike look as cool as it could have looked because the one they had on the website was just like full purple and it looked way, way better. Right. It's just one solid color. And it was like, actually looked significantly better. But interesting that I, I guess a lot of people who are buying Ribbles now don't know the history. They didn't know that there used to be like a group set website where you got your crappy winter bike from. So the, the transition has been pretty impressive mm -hmm. so what are you saying uh, underrated i guess there we go yeah. cool pinarello overrated they've paid their way to success what well, isn't that what all brands do no no some brands just make a quality product yes yeah true and perhaps are less successful but that yeah, doesn't mean sure. they're not successful for sure for sure for sure mm. a lot of small brands that do really good stuff don't market it very well they yeah. let the product speak for them for them for itself. Uh, I like Pinner. I've been filming with Jane. I personally, I don't like how Pinarellos look. Same. I think they look like a Salvador Dali, like melted 
frame. Oh, I do like Salvador Dali though. Yeah, but you, would oh, you put I'm... would you put it on the wall of your house? What a Salvador Dali? Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, of course I would. An original. Well, of course. I got you one. Well, that, no, that'd be excellent. <laughs> I can retire. <laughs> now they're amazing paintings. <laughs> the bikes look like a thing inside a Salvador Dali painting. They look like they've melted. Well, now I love them. Now what? I want one. You want one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, cool. So it's underrated for you. Well, it is now. Great. Yeah. yeah. There's another reason why they're underrated. They make, I, I think, and this is, I, I might be wrong. James told me this. Bike Fit James. They make the current, like in terms of mass production bikes, the they make the shortest and tallest frame set currently available, like in the sort of performance market. Right. So you can buy, it's called the Pinarello X and it's really short, really tall. So the geometry is very relaxed and easy for people to fit. So if you're the average cyclist is going to be able to fit this bike, but it looks like a race bike still. Yeah. Particularly the red one doesn't look that nice. The black one looks fantastic. Like it's basically a dogma. Um, unfortunately, they haven't quite nailed it in the same way they, in the way they could have because it is a bit heavy still. It's not like the top end grade of carbon fiber. Right. It's a slightly cheaper version. And, uh, you know, I think they retail for like 4,000 pounds, as if that's not a top end bike now. 4,000 pounds. Yeah. So that's just like their, their cheaper carbon version. And it's a bit heavy, which is a shame. Do they still do the ugly fork? No. Oh, good. It still waves slightly, but it's not the same. It's like, got like a block yeah, on it, yeah. doesn't it? The carbon, um, Rob, the carbon guy, he was talking about that fork to mm -hmm. me and we didn't end up making a video about it in the end but he was a fan he thought it was quite clever because essentially they've made the fork longer than it is because it waves yep. so you've got a longer line which then should be more compliant because it's longer so it reflects more and by but and that compliant was his, means he was comfortable presumably. comfortable yeah yeah mm. uh whether that actually has an effect or not because when, when i think about it the wavy shape you still got the carbon in the middle is still the same length from there to there. Like it it potentially doesn't... isn't because it's probably not one piece of carbon. It'd be like lots of little pieces. In a shape. Mm. You need to speak to an engineer who understands this. Yeah. But they moved away from it. So perhaps it didn't make any difference at all. Well, I presume well, it would at least be more expensive to make. Mm. At least the bikes look better now because they haven't got a weird wavy fork. So yeah, uh, underrated. I'm going to get myself a Pinarello. You're going to get, yeah. The Salvador Dali edition. Yeah, I might. I just, I just don't like how they look. So I'm going to have to say overrated. GCN. Oh, why have we done this? <laughs> Blame Emily, not me. I think five, five years ago, yeah. they were outrageously overrated. And now? They're not underrated. When did the... Uh, GC and app and racing coverage come out. So they got bought as well, didn't they? They yeah. got bought well, by a bigger company. No, they were they were they're owned by yeah Warner Brothers. It's Discovery, yeah. <laughs> as if they're owned by Warner Brothers. That is mm. mental. Mm -hmm. That is so bonkers. And it's huge. It's huge. That is insane. When I watched pro racing, you always had to like go on a weird steephill.tv uh live stream and find it because i couldn't afford to watch it properly and pay for eurosport and you'd have to have a tv you'd have to have like sky or whatever to get that it, it's like supporting sunderland football club what is trying to watch professional cycling what is very hard to it's just it's impossible to find it oh you, you just can't you can't get it online <laughs> you can't watch any but of the they're, they're so yeah. far down the yeah. leagues that it's very hard to see a game <laughs> however it has now that they have changed that for the better because everyone, you get the GCN app, it's really cheap. Even, and sometimes it's re like reduced for a year and you get it for a year and you can watch any race there, right there on demand. And it's amazing. Is it Eurosport that, as well? That or is, is it not? brilliant. Despite what you think of the videos that come out on the YouTube channel, which I think are appropriate for some people and some people who are well into cycling, they don't chime with anymore and that's fine. But you just correctly or they are correctly rated or underrated. And I'm, I'm not sure which. Well, correct, we're not allowed to use correctly rated. Well, in that case, they are underrated. Oh, wow. But more because of the app, not the YouTube channel. The app is bigger. This is like the other stuff they do, the Eurosport stuff and all that, that is big, way bigger than the YouTube channel, surely. In terms of like eyes on it. I, th I think I like, I like your analysis. I do. I, th I think I agree. They're yeah. like the distributor of Eurosports stuff, aren't they? 
if it's Warner Brothers and Discovery, probably. It's just the cycling bit of Eurosport. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That's so good for their brand, isn't it? Is GCM part of Eurosport? Discovery Communications, the owners of Eurosport, announced the acquisition of Play Sports Group that owns GCN. We should probably have a chat with like Disney or something, rather, and do a partnership with Disney so that we can start making videos about like, we just animate ourselves. You know, we wouldn't have to come to the studio as often because we'll just be like animations. Not AI though. I'm not talking about AI. You know that thing where I come up with ideas and you're like, you know, we should really just focus on making videos. Yeah. This is one. This is an example of that. You should take your own advice. But that is making videos. Because I was, I got really excited the other day about bringing back Panda Pops and making it Still don't know uh, what the is. sponsor for the podcast. So we could have like this, the camera in the middle here gets a shot of us in the podcast and we have these drinks, which is currently just a mug of Zelda water. And your weird queen mug, which you turn around. Not, not the queen. Not the queen. Not my queen. No, not your queen. And that's prime sponsorship opportunity, isn't it? However, wouldn't it be genius if we brought Panda Pops? Do you remember Panda Pops? No, for the time. Everyone knows Panda Pops. I don't know what well, they, they are. One of the best, basically the best drink in the world. And a panda on the front of it and lots of different flavors. You've got cherry one, blue one, the Coca-Cola version, cola flavor. And they, they discontinued. 2011, they stopped. I know all the facts about Panda Pops because I, I want to bring it back and I want to make it the sponsor of our podcast, even though it is us, but we set it up as a separate business and I bet loads of the audience will buy Panda Pops because it is awesome. I vaguely recognize it and I'm vetoing it. Why? Because it's crap. I think it's brilliant. Overrated. However, I'm glad you vetoed it because it would distract us. It would distract me from making videos, which is what our focus should be. Why? What would you be doing? Developing new flavors of Panda Pops, yeah. Well, I'd have to do everything. Well, you just said I'd have to make the labels. I'd have to do it, all of it, yeah. Well, no, you... but I'd run the company as well. What you're saying is... <laughs> so now what I'd you're saying is... I'd bring it back. I'd, re I'd reincarnate Panda Pops for everybody. And then there'll be less videos going out because I edit these. Why didn't you change it to like Francis Pops and just start your own... Because then it doesn't have a panda on, does it? Well, look, you can be you as a panda. Which will get Disney to animate for us. Well, that easier. It'll be easier to get like the licensing and copyrights stuff sorted, wouldn't it? Because then it wouldn't probably be not. <laughs> you <reckon? laughs> no. But you reckon that we could bring back Panda Pops without having like any legal battle? No, it's it's Francis Pops, and our, and the logo of Francis Pops is you hugging a panda. No, the reason it's Disney successful is, it, is it. the alliteration. It's a full package. It's a full package. Right, fluff up of the week. This is Jimmy's problem, not mine. It's not, because it's going to become your problem. What is it? It's you hoarding. You're no, a hoarder. The problem is... so You are a hoarder, Francis. I'm not a hoarder. We, yes, have some, we have some bike stuff. There's one wheel in particular. In, there's one wheel in particular in this studio, which is very sentimental to me. Hoarder. It's an old spin on these that I took to... Uh, I was in Mauritius doing some riding with the national team. And then the guy pumped it up with a pump at a car park, uh, not car park, what's it called? Petrol station. And you got those inflators, mm -hmm. the compressor, and it went, psh, psh, and the wheel exploded in yep. his face and ceiling and carbon went everywhere. Yep. And it's been hanging around the studio and we used it for a thumbnail the other day. And it has lots of carbon shards sticking out of it. And I said to every employee at Cade Media, we had a meeting, Bella included. This didn't happen. This did happen. And I said, did not. nobody touch this wheel because you'll get carbon in your fingers and you'll never get it out, probably ever. You've literally never said this to me until I said, oh, I've got carbon in my hand. And you were like, you're going to be, that's going to be I in have, there forever. You just forgot. That's going to be in there you forever. Forgot. You shouldn't have touched the, spit, the, the, the wheel. You can complain to HR. You're a, I am HR and you're getting the sack. So stop talking to me. You are a hoarder. Talk to yourself. And we're not going to hoard anymore. I'm sorry. It's going. It's going today. Well, but to get rid of it, someone's got to touch it again. Yeah, you. Nah, I'm not touching that. I listened to my meeting. So yeah, I've got at least two pieces of carbon still stuck in my It's thumb. surprisingly, it's not like a splinter you'd get from wood either. If you touch that kind of carbon, any broken carbon, it like gets in you and it works its way in. And then you have to wait until your body basically just rejects it. Yeah, through the other side. Unless though. you want to do some DIY surgery. And that's oh, horrible, 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 horrible. I did start. I did start on the surgery and got about five of the pieces. And it out. hurts the whole time, doesn't it? Mm, yeah. Like, yeah little, thanks it's for like that. a little ache. Thanks for that. Beneath your thumb. Next up is listeners' takeover, and we have a question from Bella. 
It's not really. It's from Joe. What's the best thing to do if I wear glasses for driving and therefore riding my bike? Should I go for contact lenses with normal cycling glasses or pay for prescription cycling glasses? I haven't got a clue. Should we ask Emily who actually wears glasses? I The only good uh, part of my body is my eyesight. So yeah, this is not one for me. No. I have... I have an answer of what I do. Um, so I also need glasses to see long distances. And what I have learned are there are three options. Either you can get prescription cycling glasses. You can get prescription inserts, which are little inserts that go into normal glasses. Or you can wear contact lenses with normal cycling glasses. Um, the prescription lenses are extremely expensive um, they can be a good option as long as your prescription doesn't change that much. So mine, every time I go and get an eye test, I need a new set of glasses because my prescription has changed. Um, so, I mean, when I looked a couple of years ago, they were like 300 to 500 pounds for like, I was looking at Oakley's to be fair, but you're limited by style. They're expensive. And obviously if you have to replace them, that's also very expensive. The inserts, I have tried two different sets and they are both absolute garbage. Um, they send you the insert and you have to sort out the prescription on your own. A lot of opticians I spoke to do not will refuse to do them because ultimately, I guess because you're not buying them off them and if they break them, they're liable. So it's quite difficult to find someone to do them. The last set I had, some guy got on, in touch on Instagram and basically said he'd do them for me in exchange for an Atticus bar bag. So I did a little deal. He, Sweet deal. He did them for me. I put them in my um, glasses and they are just the worst things ever. I rode for 10 minutes. And I felt like I was going to be sick. Like just the field of vision is disgusting. Yeah. So I think they're just rubbish. Write those off. The thing that Presumably I do. Presumably not because of that guy's work. No. Well, I mean, possibly. No, no, it wasn't. They're just, they're just, they're not flat. They're like concave towards your eyes. So, I guess maybe it's just the brand that I was using was rubbish, but I've tried two different sets and they're both rubbish. I would say contact lenses. It means you can do whatever you want in terms of style. The glasses cost less. The, the contacts don't cost that much. And if you're worried about, you know, take a spare with you. I also have a spare in my tool bag or, or, you know, take a set of glasses with you in case you need to change. But I would say contacts and everyone else I know who wears glasses wears contacts. So I'll go for that. That is my long-winded answer. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. <laughs> Did you know you can have more than 2020 vision? Yes. Like better than 2020 vision? Me. Is it all you've got? Yeah. Wow. I, I, I'm pretty sure I was described as having the vision of a hawk. Ah. <laughs> By who? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you saw those ruffians down exactly. the track exactly. yeah because mm. i would have carried if i was on my own i would have carried on running like, oh the guy on a touring bike i'm gonna go and say hello <laughs> and then i would have got my bike stolen and it would be really long walking home <laughs> guy on a touring bike <laughs> that really does show how bad your eyesight is because it Awful. was it was it, it Awful. was almost like a train was coming towards us if you've got any questions or stories please send it to wild ones podcast at cademedia.co.uk that's all for this episode before you go if you like this episode, please consider subscribing, following, or leaving us a review. It really helps us grow the channel and allows us to bring you more stuff like this. Thank you. Goodbye.